Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about fetal circulation. So if we look here, what I want to go over in this is mainly just the important fetal structures that are designed to be able to either deliver blood from the fetus to the placenta or from the placenta back to the fetus, and I want to go over the structures that are designed to bypass the pulmonary circuit and prevent the blood from going into the baby's lungs. And then we're going to go over the adult remnants of those fetal structures. All right, so first things first, if we look here, here's the placenta. All right, so this is the placenta usually develops around the 12th week of uh, uh, gestation. Then here we have the umbilical cord. In the umbilical cord, there's two vessels. If you look here, this red one right there, that's the umbilical vein. I know it seems weird because it's red, but remember, umbilical veins, uh, they're designed to be able to take blood back to the heart. So this is taking blood to the heart. That's what its definition is but it's taking it from the placenta who oxygenated it since the baby's lungs aren't functioning. So it takes this oxygenated blood, and this is, again, this is the umbilical vein. It takes it into a structure here around the liver. So if I look in here at the top part here, there's a tiny little shunt that shunts blood from the umbilical vein into the inferior vena cava. And this is our inferior vena cava right here, number four. All this is our inferior vena cava. There's a tiny little shunt up here called the ductus venosus. Again, it's called the ductus venosus. All right guys, so what I wanted to do is reposition the model so to be able to uh, better see the ductus venosus. So again, the ductus venosus is actually gonna be a tiny little shunt that shunts the blood from that red structure you see there, the umbilical vein, into the blue structure right next to it called the inferior vena cava. So again, that is the ductus venosus. So again, the ductus venosus is actually going to specifically shunt the blood from that red structure there, the umbilical vein, into the blue structure right next to it called the inferior vena cava, and that's the ductus venosus. In the adult, it becomes what's called the ligamentum venosum. All right guys, so if we take a look here, now the blood's coming up to the inferior vena cava, and we already know that it dumps into the right atrium. Well, in the right atrium, we have this pipe cleaner because it's so, such a tiny little hole. There's a hole in between the right atrium and the left atrium over here, and we're gonna signify with this, this orange pipe cleaner right here. This orange pipe cleaner is actually referred to be the foramen ovale. It's not the pipe cleaner itself, it's the hole that's actually moving from the right to the left atrium. And then again, that is called the foramen ovale. And what happens is whenever the baby's born, it turns into a scar tissue in the adult, which is called the, or just in general, turns into scar tissue. This is called the fossa ovalis, okay? So again, foramen ovale is the fetal structure. Fossa ovalis is specifically the design to be the adult or the afterbirth structure. And then again, we already said ductus venosus, that's gonna become the ligamentum venosum. We didn't mention the umbilical vein, but I'm gonna say it now, it becomes what's called the ligamentum teres, or the round ligament. So there's gonna be another structure here, which is gonna be in between number eight in the pulmonary trunk and the aorta, it's right in here. We're gonna take a closer look at it so we can kinda of get a better eye on that. All right guys, so if we take a closer look here, we can see this little part where I'm sticking this actual point in that's gonna be the, the specifically the ductus arteriosus. It's a little shunt between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. And again, it's basically designed to bypass the pulmonary circuit and prevent blood from going to the lungs. In the adult, it becomes what's called the ligamentum arteriosum. Okay, it becomes the ligamentum arteriosum. All right, last structure I wanna talk about and then we're gonna do a quick recap. If you see this guy right here, this right here is the umbilical artery. And then remember, this is deoxygenated blood because it has to go into the placenta where it's gonna undergo gas exchange. Because remember, once again, the baby is in amniotic fluid. It can't breathe, it, can't, it doesn't have access to oxygen. So it has to come from the placenta. So this is why it has, right here, the umbilical artery and is deoxygenated, okay? All right guys, so a quick recap. So if we look here, let's, start, let's say we start at the placenta. So we start here at the placenta and it starts moving the blood here and let's say it goes through the umbilical vein. The umbilical vein goes and it actually dumps the blood, again, right up there where that ductus venosus is, to put the blood from the umbilical vein into the inferior vena cava. It goes up, empties the blood into the right atrium. Now when it's in the right atrium, there's two paths that it can take. One is it can go through that hole called the foramen ovale, which shunts the blood from the right atrium over here into the left atrium. If it goes that way, it can go down into the left ventricle and then up through the aorta, so bypassing the lungs. But what if some of that blood gets down here into the right ventricle? If some of the blood gets down into the right ventricle, that's okay, because when it gets pumped up through the pulmonary trunk here, there's that little shunt right here, which is again, remember, called the ductus arteriosus. 
and that shunts the blood from the pulmonary trunk into the aorta, bypassing the lungs. So now we're in the aorta from both the left ventricle and from that ductus arteriosus. Now we go down the aorta, and we'll actually come down the common iliacs, and then you'll go down the internal iliacs, and then you go into this structure here, which again we said is the umbilical artery. And I didn't mention what the umbilical artery does. Uh, what it becomes, it becomes specifically the medial umbilical ligament. You can take that one if you want. And then after that, it takes this, it goes to the umbilical cord, through the umbilical cord, and takes it back to the placenta, where it drops off the CO2, picks up the oxygen, and then takes it back through the umbilical vein again. All right, guys, so that pretty much gives us everything we need to know about fetal circulation.